Hello and welcome back to another painting tutorial. This time I'm focusing on the new Fire Slayers, notably the Volkite Berserkers, and I'll be showing you how you can paint these guys using the Games Workshop range of paints. So here we have the miniature that we're painting in this tutorial, and I've kept the head separate in this case as it makes it a lot easier to paint the, the chest areas when the beard isn't getting in the way, so I've just put, applied it to uh, a pin there. Now, uh, as you can see, I've uh, primed it using a grey spray primer, and now this is because grey uh, works as a fantastic base if you're painting lighter colours, which is what we will be doing on this particular miniature. Now, I've used a generic acrylic spray primer, however, you could just as easily use the Mechanica Standard Grey one from Citadel, or the Army Painter's Uniform Grey Spray Primer. Now, the first layer that we'll actually be painting on this miniature is Bugman's Glow, and we're painting this over all of the skin areas. So for this layer, I'm uh, thinned down my paint slightly, and this is because it's a lot easier to paint on several thin layers than it is to paint on one thick layer straight out of the pot. And it also gives us much better coverage. And you can see I'm just being quite liberal ensuring that the paint gets all over the skin. You don't have to worry too much about it being neat at this stage. The main important thing is to make sure you get the best coverage as possible. So once this layer is dry, I'll then be applying a second layer, once again using a thinned down Bugman's Glow. So for the next step, we want to get some really subtle blending on the flesh area. So for this, we'll be using a mixture of Acadian Flesh Tone and Lamium Medium, mixed in roughly 50-50 quantities, and we're applying this over the entirety of the skin area. So for this step, we've essentially created a glaze. Now what this will do is it'll help to achieve some better blending between the Bugman's Glow and the Acadian Flesh Tone. So what we're doing, applying it over there, and when it dries, it'll, it'll become a little bit clearer, so it won't be quite as strong a colour as this, and it'll just create some nice soft blending between the layers. So as in the previous step, we'll be continuing using the Cadian Flesh Tone, mixed with 25% Lamium Medium this time, and we'll be focusing this mainly on the raised areas of the skin. So by, build <clears throat> so by building up the layers in this way, we actually create some nice blending over the skin areas, and as you can see here, I'm just focusing on the raised sections of the muscle, leaving the darker areas visible in the recesses beneath. So for the next step, we'll now be highlighting the flesh areas with Kisla Flesh mixed with about 25% Lamium Medium. So for this highlight, I'm using a detail brush and I'll be focusing this on the upper areas, such as the top of the shoulder here. Just anywhere where there's a raised section that's quite higher than the others. And you also got to kind of imagine as well that the light is coming from above here, so it's going to be anywhere that's going to be at the top, you'll do the highlight. So now that we've completed the layers on the skin, we can now wash over the entirety of the skin with Reichland Flesh Shade. Now for this wash, I've mixed in a small amount of water into the mix, just to improve the flow slightly. And what this wash will do is it'll improve the blending between the layers that we've already done in the previous steps, as well as increasing the shading in the recesses. So now that we've completed the skin, we can now move on to painting the hair and also the beards as well. And for this, we'll be using Troll Slayer Orange. Now, if you've decided to use a slightly different colour for the primer as opposed to the grey, then you could actually uh, base coat with Jacaro Orange, and that would apply, give you a much better kind of surface to work on. But if you're using grey like me, then uh, Troll Slayer Orange is fine. So I've mixed in a small amount of water into the Troll Slayer Orange. I'm just going to be applying it all over the hair like so, and as you can see there, it's just applying a thin coat, and I'll apply a couple of these coats, and this will give me the best coverage possible. So now that the base layer is down, we can now highlight... <clears throat> so now that the base layer is down, we can now wash over the beard areas, and now this, for this we'll be using Caraberg Crimson. So this step is a two-part process. First of all, I've uh, mixed in some water with the wash, and I'll just be applying this over all of the hair area, just making sure that the, the wash goes into all the recesses and this will create some uh, nice shading on the orange areas like so. So the second step for this wash is to apply a secondary wash straight out of the pot on the lower sections of the hair like so and we'll be focusing at this bottom and this will create a nice almost like flame effect on the hair. So once the wash is finished we can now start highlighting the hair and for this we'll be using a Fire Dragon Bright and we'll be applying this to the, the outer edges of the mane at the back and also the upper tips of the beard as well. So as you can see, I'm just going to be focusing the highlight onto the tips of the mane, just like so. And this will enhance the kind of flame effect that we've already achieved in the previous step by using the wash. So the next step is to paint any of the scale areas, as you can see there on the tabard just there, and also on the back of the tabard as well. Uh, you can also paint the, the hilts on the axes as well, just, uh, just between where the hands and these two like sections are. And we're painting all of these areas with corn red. 
So when painting these areas, I would recommend that you use a detail brush, and this will just allow you to get into all the areas that you need to without overspilling onto the areas that we've already painted. So next we're going to be washing over all of the red areas we've just painted with a Caraberg Crimson. So as you can see here, I'm just going to be washing over the red areas and being quite liberal with my application of the wash. And this is just to apply some nice shading in the recesses. So the next step is to highlight all of the red areas with Evil Sun Scarlet. So as you can see on the back of the tabard here, I'm just going to be highlighting the tips of these scales just to create some nice depth in the collar. So the next step is to paint the handle on the axe, the leather straps on the, the belt there, including the ones at the side as well, and also the cuffs in the insides there as well. And painting all of these areas with a bad and black. So as with our previous base layers, it's generally a good idea to mix in a small amount of water, just to thin down the paint slightly, and then apply several layers as opposed to just one thick one. And this will give us the best coverage possible. So next we'll be now highlighting the black areas with Mechanicus Standard Grey. So using my detail brush, I'll just be focusing this highlight on the edges of the areas that were painted black in the previous step, I'm just lightly dragging the brush along the edges like so. So the next step in painting the miniature is to paint all of the silver areas, and for this we'll be using Iron Breaker. Now this includes both the, the axe heads there as well, and also the sections on the helmet, if I just bring in the head then. So just these, uh, these areas on the helmet there as well. So for this step we want to be using a smaller detail brush just to make sure that we don't overspill into any areas that we've already painted as it's actually quite difficult to remove any silver areas once we've overspilled. So the next step is to wash over all of the silver areas with Nuln Oil. So you can be quite liberal when applying this to the metal areas as we want to create some nice shading and definition on the metal areas like so. So once the wash is dry, we can now highlight the metal areas, and for this we'll be using Runefang Steel. So for this step, I'm using my detail brush, and I'll just be focusing the Runefang Steel along the edges of the blades and any other metal areas that we've painted in the previous steps. So the next step is to paint all of the gold areas, and for this, we'll be using Hash or Copper. Now these areas include the uh, areas such as the belt details here, the runic symbols embedded into the skin, the uh, detailing on the axe handle there as well, and also the, the crest on the helmet there as well. So once you've painted all the gold areas, the next step is to wash over all the gold with Seraphim Sepia. Now the great thing about using Seraphim Sepia for a wash is because it's not as quite as dark as Agarok's Lower Shade, so using it on gold means that you create some nice shading without actually dulling the colour of the gold. Now I'm just going to be applying this wash over all of the gold areas, uh, applying it quite liberally, making sure that it gets into all of the recesses. So the final step for painting the gold is to highlight it with Auric Armor Gold. Now for this step I'll be using a detail brush and I'll be focusing this on the edges of the gold areas. I'm painting this uh, Auric Gold on them very lightly uh, just to make sure that it creates a nice kind of uh, depth of colour on the gold areas. So the final step for painting this miniature is to paint all of the gems that are dotted about this miniature. And for this we'll be using Temple Guard Blue. So as these areas are quite small I'm using my detail brush here. I'm just going to lightly dab on the Temple Guard Blue just onto the crystals. And here we have the completed miniature, who you can see that I've mounted onto this kind of volcanic base. Now while this tutorial focused mainly on the Volkite Berserkers, the techniques and colours that I've used could easily be applied to any of the Fire Slayer miniatures. Now if you enjoyed this tutorial and would like to see more, let me know in the comments below about which Age of Sigmar units you would like me to cover in the future. Additionally, be sure to subscribe to be kept up to date with all of my latest painting tutorials. Also, if you would like to support me in making more tutorials, you can do so by heading over to my Patreon page, which I'll pop a link to in the description below. On there, you can donate from as little as a dollar a month, and that'll just help her in supporting me to get uh, miniatures and paints using these tutorials. So, until next time, thanks for watching, and goodbye.